The QX5252 project, the perpetual, wait a minute, what's that doing? Let's get rid of that. Okay, the QX5252 perpetual light project. Uh, so the next stage for me is to maybe uh, mock it up into something which, um, well, firstly, uses uh, a more efficient solar cell uh, from a previous blog, which I'll link up here. Um, yep, so that's, I think it's something like 130 milliamps as opposed to something like, I think it was 100 milliamps. But it did make a significant difference when I tested it. So um, check that one out. But also, we have this ridiculously small QX5252. So that's what it looks like. I don't know if I can zoom in on that, let's put it in the center and uh, have a little bit of a look. Yeah, it's not really very edifying, is it? Um, but next to it, I've got what the um, the actual thing looks like. Um, let's rotate this around. And in terms of the pinout. So it's like the TO92 package in that there's a connection there for the battery. There's a connection for ground. There's a connection for the solar cell. And then there's your out. But there's an extra pin here called LS. And that one is about being, um, well, it's a, it's a light sensor. So what I didn't know was how do I use this? Um, you know, if I connect it to ground, what happens? If I connect it to uh, five volts, what's happened? So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually mock up one of these, uh, like the old uh, circuit, but I'm just gonna play around with this LS uh, to see what the effect is. To make this thing usable, uh, I originally thought maybe I could mock up something on the PCB and uh, started that process, but it's just way too small. And I didn't have any adapter plates specifically for it, but I do have a heap of these uh, adapters here. So let me just get a bit closer on that if I can. So I normally use this side for things like the A-Tiny 13 and the a Tiny 85, that's about the right size for those guys. So that's a SOP 8 or even an SSOP. Um, but on the other side is this tiny little one with a 0.1 pitch. And uh, I thought, well, maybe I can use that. So what I've done is I've put it on the uh, board and uh, I'll, I'll actually put a close up here of what that looks like. But the next thing was to actually test continuity to try and find out which pin corresponds to uh, to which uh, side of the because it's not obviously not a SOP, uh, SOP eight or anything like that. So I had to actually look at uh, the the pins themselves coming out of the device. So let's have a look at let's say this one, and then match it to the pin to see which is coming out of here, just for continuity. And there we go. So that was the first bit. And then I matched it up according to uh, the actual um, pinout that, uh, that's given in the very Spartan data sheet. Not very useful at all. And still no explanation of what the actual uh, LS does. So that's what this circuit is about. So for the moment, we don't have a, um, a solar panel on there. Um, so, which is fine, uh, but now because you know at, no at night time uh, you don't have the solar panel anyway, and then the actual um, the actual light or the current flows, uh, and then when you you do have the solar panel on during the day, the current normally stops. Uh, and we worked out last time, and I'll, and I'll link that up up here. Uh, we worked out that we could build two of these circuits, one which is for the solar panel and one which is for the battery. So um, now let's uh, let's get this going and see if we can't. Okay, so I'm going to hook it up to ground to start with. And uh, I know you can see that if it's hooked up to ground, then current is flowing. And if it's hooked up to battery, then current is not flowing. Uh, and I did find that that's the same with the solar cell too. So whether the solar cell's in there or not, 
uh, if this is hooked up to the battery, then it doesn't flow. If it's hooked up to ground, it flows whether the, the solar cell is there or not. So this is sort of good and sort of sad. The, um, the great bit is that now I don't need to do the, the double QX5252 to trick this thing into actually operating during the daytime. Um, the sad thing is that, you know, that was a whole separate project, which is now null and void. But um, it does cut down on components. And um, really, the only thing is that this thing is so small that um, it's a bit of a pain to, um, to actually solder up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make a, um, yeah, well, let's actually, I'll just move this out of the way. I'll move all this out of the way and I'll come back and show you what my thoughts are. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to do was to have a, a bit of a, a panel. I don't quite know how to draw this. Let's draw it like this. So I'm going to have, I'm just going from the side here, I'm going to have something where I can put a solar panel on here with, at an angle, uh, which is sitting, this whole thing is sitting on a windowsill uh, with the sun beaming in that way. And then through this, uh, construction, which is you know obviously going to be 3D printed, uh, we would have uh, a PCB, uh, well maybe a battery up here. So battery compartment goes up here somewhere, and then a PCB either here or here. Haven't quite decided. And then out of the PCB uh, to this side here comes four LEDs, and these LEDs will flash in a random way. So I'm going to um, well I'll show you what the end result was for the actual, let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit. So this is the actual panel itself, 3D printed, and I'll, I'll stop it in a bit and show you how that process went. And then you can see the uh, the four lights which will go here, and I'll, put a little, I'll punch a little hole here for the wires from the solar panel. Uh, and I'll also um, have a quick look at the code as well. And then we'll come back and uh, and we'll build it and and see. I mean, the whole, the whole point of this is that this will test, you know, it'll stretch the capacity of this circuit quite considerably because instead of just having one light which is on and off from time to time, this will be four lights which are flashing in random pretty much all the time. So I don't really expect this to go night and day. That's the experiment. How far can we push that circuit? Anyway, uh, we'll build it and, uh, well, actually I'll stop first. I'll show you how I built this and uh, I'll show you the code and then we'll, we'll build it with this uh, little package and we'll go from there. Right, so um, looking at uh, PB0, 1, 2 and 3, uh, it's just nice to use those pins because that corresponds to uh, port B, uh, the first four bits. Uh, so uh, there are those four bits there. And what we'll do is we'll just set them to output and uh, we will then turn them off. And those ports that have been, uh, or the pins that have been set as input we just do pull up by um, setting them all to one. There's our little uh, interrupt service routine for the watchdog timer and the random number generator or pseudo random number generator, which we've used before for the candle project. Our power down routine uh, has a setting of 64 milliseconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, cycle through that uh, a random number of times and that creates the sleep time and also the on time for the lights. There's our brownout detector, uh, which has to be done in a, uh, turning it off, which has to be done in a certain sequence. And finally, a little bit of a delay at the end of the power down, uh, so it can actually settle down. There's our first um, randomizer, getting the uh, random number between 0 and 15, and then a random number between 1 and 25, which will determine how many sleeps we have. Uh, and then finally, what we do is we just uh, send those that number to the uh, to port B and then we either if it's on it'll sleep for a random certain time and if it's off it'll sleep for a random amount of time okay so let's burn those fuses so we'll we'll select 128 kilohertz and uh, and burn it and then you can see that happening and then we'll just compile and load that program and then we'll see those LEDs flash in that pseudo random pattern. Um, so that's it. So what I'm hoping to do then is to take that program and to run it more or less continuously night and day 
using the QX5252 um, configured to just supply that little A-Tiny 13 kicking over at 128 kilohertz uh, with a little bit of power. So um, yeah, so that's at least the program working. So let's get on to the 3D uh, part of the project. I've sped this up quite a little bit. So I'm literally just drawing this freehand uh, from pretty much what you saw on the paper. So I'm not uh, getting too fussed about it, but just trying to set it up with roughly the right dimensions. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll use constraints to make sure that the wall thickness in each case is two millimeters. And you do that by selecting a vertex and the opposite side and then just dialing up two millimeters or whatever you want. So, um, and then what we need to do is we need to fill it out. So um, once that's done, you can see then that that uh, has been set to, I think it's 50 millimeters across or five centimeters. Now I'm just going to uh, punch a hole through. So this is three millimeters. Um, which we've done before as well. So, um, yeah, that's fine. And uh, then I'm just going to forward here to where I've punched all of them out. So um, that's the four holes for the LEDs. I've rounded the corners there. That's where the solar panel will fit and a little rectangular cutout there for the wiring. Now we go to Ultimaker Cura and uh, import that file. And we'll just have a little bit of a look at it and then select the um, infill uh, looks like around 20% and uh, the um, the default there is the 0.2 millimeters for the um, for the nozzle so then exporting the G code and saving it and now just a again slightly sped up just a little bit of a look at the uh, ender uh, 3d in action or the printing so yeah that's it. So now let's go to the construction of that uh, that actual circuit. Right. So here's the PCB with the A Tiny 13 on the left hand side, and the little SMD QX5252 on the right hand side. Now we see that uh, PCB pretty well. It's pretty complete. There's some LED testing going on there, so you can see the familiar inductor and capacitor zener diode on the top there. That's a 5.1 volt. And underneath, uh, there's a shot key there as well, and some appalling soldering. And uh, here we are with the 3.3k uh, ohm resistors that are going to feed the LEDs. The LEDs themselves, I was going to go with 3 millimetre LEDs at the start, but I ended up, um, well, I soldered up these little 0805. Uh, LEDs on the uh, assumption that they're going to be a little more efficient. Here they are appallingly hot glued into the 3D um, little container that I made there and uh, this is actual video of the testing before everything is put in together. You can see that the PCB I've just rounded the edges off there a little bit as well. So you're pretty much complete at this stage. Uh, just a matter of um, putting it all together uh, inside that little 3D printed enclosure, and there it is. It's got a triple, uh, sorry, a double A battery on the top, and um, you can see the uh, solar panel there at the front, and the lights going at the back. And uh, here it is on the window sill. So quite a lot to this project in the end. You've got the A tiny kicking along um, at 128 kilohertz. You've got the uh, 0805 LEDs, um, the 3D printed enclosure. So, um, yeah, and of course, a little SMD QX5252, a bit of a revelation. Uh, that's the circuit working. See you next time.